and Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, who served four combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Colonel, let's start with you. You heard the open there. What are we missing? Is this the Russian army we've all been afraid of all these years? What's happening? Yeah, the, the, what you see here is that Russia badly underestimated the uh, defensive capacity and the willingness to fight of the Ukraine. And they basically thought they would come in and do it on the cheap. And so they, they did not come in with their full combined arms capabilities that, they, that their normal uh, defensive uh, strategies call for, which surprised me because I, the way I saw those troops set up, I, they were perfectly set up for that. But they wanted to come in on the cheap and just kind of make the Ukraines just give up because they saw maybe a lot of tanks coming in and then they would be able to just put pressure on Zelensky and they thought that they would get out of it with nothing. They quickly realized that that was a dramatic mistake, but it's, it's, the important thing is that we have to understand is that only a small percentage of Russia's armor has actually been employed so far, and the majority of it is now lined up, not just on that 17-mile stretch you talked about, but the biggest, uh, the biggest concern is in the south and in the far east where uh, not many cameras in the west are, so not many people are following that, but the, the Russians are almost ready to circle a very large portion of the Ukrainian armed forces down there. And if they close that off, then they can take out a large portion of the Ukrainian armed forces, and then they can move those forces. Now then they can move on Ukraine from two and possibly three different directions. There's also evidence out right now that the Russians are now ready to take the gloves off and have that strong combined arms fight that we all expected and bring their air power to bear, which basically hasn't even hardly been involved with it yet. And it is still out there. And if they bring all that to bear, this could come crashing down in the way that a lot of us were afraid of, you know, the Red Army, as you pointed out. They still are very lethal. And, and uh, this thing is not over by any stretch. Right. OK, well, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I understand that. But what happens with this convoy, Colonel? Uh, again, for any other uh, advanced military comp uh, country, they would see that and say this this would be a, a, an easy target. Does Ukraine have the firepower to attack that convoy, if not from the ground, from the air? Yeah, that, that's exactly what, what I thought when I saw that thing, because uh, ordinarily, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a former uh, armor officer, and, and, you know, and I've been in armored combat in, in Desert Storm, and so when I saw that, I mean, I, I just cringed just because I'm like, I, I know that's like lethal if you're just parked on a road in, in normal right. modern warfare, because either the aircraft can come in and just, just strafe you, or drones can come in and do it in, in the modern case now. But it doesn't appear that Ukraine has the capacity to do any of that. In fact, so far, when they've gotten planes up, they get shot down almost immediately mm -hmm. because Russia does have their uh, anti-aircraft uh, forces there that are up front, and they have been very effective. And so th that shows you that the Ukraine doesn't have the capacity to do it, or they would have already burned up most of them. I mean, they would have attacked them for sure. But the fact that they haven't shows you that they don't, they don't have that capacity, do and that's a problem. Do you think it's a matter of time before Kiev falls? It, it, without question, it is. If Russia brings to bear their full combined arms co power, there's just nothing that Ukraine can do to stop it. I mean, that, we just have to be honest and admit that. Ukraine's armed forces is primarily an infantry force. They don't have much mobility, and their experience is mainly on that trench line that they've manned for eight years. And they're not good at mobile warfare, which is what Russia can do if they unleash it. So if they do, then there's not much anybody can do to stop it. And that's why I think that Zelensky's best plan is to do the best he can in the negotiation uh, because that may be his only play besides being physically defeated. What do we get out of the weapons that we have sent and Germany has sent? Will those potentially make a difference? Will they get there in time? How do they get there? No, we, we, we just have to understand that's, that, that looks good on paper uh, and it makes people feel good about doing something. But look, in, in terms of actual combat capability, you have to put things in people's hands many months in advance or, or something that's, that can be simple and, and usable in their defensive capacity right now. But that's not going to change anything. They need mobility. They need training and, and air, air capabilities, anti-aircraft capabilities, and, and none of those things happen. Those are, those are things that are going to be only on the margins. It'll help in some cases, but it definitely won't be decisive. All right. Well, it's going to be something we'll all be watching for sure, especially as the days and weeks unfold. I think we might see uh, the resolution to this convoy sooner rather than later. But uh, Colonel Davis, it is great to have Looks you with like us. It. Yeah. Thank you for the time. We'll be in touch. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.